Hello kids, welcome to another video from my website sickmaths.co.uk where you can find lots of free maths videos. This one's about indices, uh, sometimes known as powers. And uh, here's a quick example of how powers work. 2 to the power 4 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Basically, you got 4 2s, they're all times each other. Yeah? That's different to 4 times 2, which is 8, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. And the reverse of that is this when you use this tick sign, which is like either for the square root, the cube root, or in this case, the fourth root, because the reverse of this exactly basically is a 4 through to 16 which is saying basically this 2 to the 4 made 16 and how do I get back to whatever number so basically what to the power 4 make 16 and the answer is back 2 yeah it's 2 again in fact there are two answers sometimes you get two answers to these routing situations where you got the tick situation uh, sometimes you get one but I'll leave that for you clever kids to realize when you got the positive uh, two answers. Uh, the reason why you got minus two as an answer is minus two to the power of four also equals sixteen. Right. The real stuff I want to explain to you here are these six different ideas. Uh, for, first of all, a to the power m times a to the power n equals a to the power m plus n. So the idea is that you just add the powers if you're timesing. Here's a quick example. 3 squared times 3 to the power 5 equals 3 to the 7 because all I did is 2 plus 5 is 7. Of course, this number and this number has to be the same for this idea to work. Again, this is the same thing again except for we're using less letters so you got m to the 5 times m to the 9 equals 14 I just made it look a bit more complicated because I stuck numbers in front of it but all you do is 8 times 2 is 16 so just times the normal numbers by itself to, uh, like normal uh, and add the powers okay uh, if you got dividing, that's just the opposite of timesing, isn't it? So instead of adding the powers, we're going to be taking away the powers. So uh, 10 to the power 8 divided by 10 cubed. 10 cubed means 10 to the power 3, by the way. Um, means uh, you just take away the powers. 8 take away 3 is 5. And uh, same here. 5 take away 9 is minus 4. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So norm numbers, you normal numbers, you just do the normal stuff to it. Yep. Uh, there's explanations of why this works but I think I'll leave that to the end for the people who are really interested. Uh, if you got a to the power x all to the power m, well, then you just times the powers, as it says here. So here's an example. 7 squared cubed, all cubed, is 7 to the 6 because 2 times 3 is 6. Over here, some of the stuff hasn't got already a power. This is the only thing that's got a power ready. So 2 to the power 3 is just 8. 2 cubed is 8, yeah? m cubed is m cubed. Right, but when you've got a power here already, so y to the power 5, 2 to the power 3, well, as I said earlier on, just times the powers, so uh, 5 times 3 is 15, so y to the 15. Um, this is interesting. Uh, there's something you have to memorize. Uh, I like to talk about this one first. In fact, I like to talk about this here. This is the explanation side of stuff. Uh, if you've got eight, a to the power 2, or a squared, that's a times a, right? So a to the 1 should be just 1a, because you've got two a's there times each other. So a to the 1 should be just 1a. So basically, a to the 1 equals itself. Okay, uh, and if we could go even further, if you notice from this stage to this stage, this is for the clever kids who really want to understand it, yeah? Uh, you're dividing by a to get from this stage to this side, because a times a and then divided by a gets you back here, and then to get to this stage, you should divide by a again, right? So a divided by a, or anything divided by itself, is always going to equal 1. So this stage to this stage, this is like, again, 2, 1, 0, you know, that's the order in which we're going. So so this is the next stage down, so you just divide by a, and you should get 1, basically. So, in short, a to the power 0 is 1, anything to the power 0 is 1, and anything to the power 1 is itself. So 12 to the power 0 is 1, uh, that's one example, and 12 to the power 1 is 12, okay, itself, basically. Uh, fraction powers. 
what's going on here? Well, I've got a to the power n divided by m, or n over m, I like, as I like to say. Okay, because we're not really thinking of it as a division. You just think of two different things going on. The top part of the fraction just as a normal power, which you'll see in a second, and the bottom part of the uh, uh, fraction or the power uh, it does uh, well if that was a 3 you do the cube root for example yeah if that was a 2 you write square root if that was a 5 you do the fifth root yeah do you remember this tick sign means like square rooting or fourth rooting or whatever so let's give you a quick example 8 to the power 2 over 3 means well uh, I generally do the rooting bit first so the 3 means cube root or the third root, you know, because I've got a three there, and then I square it afterwards. Okay, you could do it in your, any order you feel like, but you tend to do the this bit first because it makes it easier. You make the number smaller before you make it really big. Basically, that's the idea behind it. This one is for the clever kids. What's going on here is uh, you square root it, which this is square root, the 2 means square root, isn't it? Yeah, and to the power 1 does nothing really. As I said earlier on, it just keeps it the same as it is so uh, yeah so that's just means square root if you ever see to the power half that means square root so the next thing to explain here is uh, if you've got negative powers in fact I'm going to explain two things in one go what do you do with fractions of powers did I say fractions of powers? yeah no if you've got a, a fraction here and I do a power to it what does it do and anyway let's go for it um, Negative powers or minus powers basically flip numbers upside down. Okay, and I'll explain why a bit more over here. But uh, if you flip something upside down, so a to the power minus m, okay, uh, means the minus bit of the power has a job of turning upside down. So a over b becomes b over a, and you'll notice the you notice the minus powers disappeared. Okay, because it's done its job. So it's done its job by flipping this fraction upside down and now m has to do its job and when you do m or power to a fraction you have to do it to the top and the bottom so basically uh, I have to do b to the power m and a to the power m which I've written here. Now since we're talking about it if you got a square root of a fraction that means I have to square root the top and the bottom as well okay so let's give a give you an example 3 over 2 to the power minus 2 well the minus part of the power has a job of flipping this upside down so I turn upside down there you go 3 over 2 becomes 2 over 3 and then there's a 2 still has to do its job there um, the minus is gone because it's done its job the 2 is going to do its job by doing it's going to square the top and the bottom so 2 squared is 4 and 3 squared is 9 and that's it uh, if you don't have a fraction how are you going to do the minus bit because the minus bit is going to uh, basically its job is to turn it upside down so you turn it into a fraction any whole number can be written as over 1 so 2 can be written as 2 over 1 5 can be written as 5 over 1 so anyway so once you've written it like that it's really easy you flip it upside down so that becomes 1 over 2 when you flip it upside down um, and then you do it to the power 4 so 1 half to the power 4 is 1 over 16 Okay, because you do 4 to the power 1, the top bit, and 4 to the power 2 is 16. Okay, uh, let's do this A star stuff, and then I'll do some of the explanation. Uh, very quickly, since you guys, if you're listening to this, you're listening to A star stuff, and you're very quick at understanding stuff, so I'll go through it very quickly. Um, uh, how do I work out what x is? Well, I have to make it e to make it easier. I try to make it look more the same. So I know this is t squared and that's two cubed. So I write that. And once I've got that, I can use this trick here uh, that you times the powers. So this becomes two to the power two x, and this becomes two to the power three x minus three, as it says here. And now, since they're really similar, it's really obvious what's going on. This must be the same as that because this is the same as that. So basically, 2x must be 3x minus 3, as it says here, and this is very easy to solve, x must be 3. Okay, uh, let's do some of the explanation. Explanation is really useful in helping you remember stuff. 
Okay, so why do we add the powers? Well, uh, if you've got y squared, that can be written like that, and y cubed can be written like that. And you'll notice you've actually got y to the power 5, because you've got 5 y's there. Okay, so the number of um, y's here is going to be that power there, and the number of y's there is going to be that power there. So, in effect, the number of y's all together is this power plus this power, um, which gives you that, really you know, it affects how the power here, isn't it? So that's the quick explanation for that. And um, dividing, when you divide, why do you have to take away powers? Well, uh, that power here tells you how many m's you have there, and that power tells you how many m's you have there. And the number of m's on the bottom cancels the same number of m's on the top. So basically, you have, uh, when you take away the powers, that tells you how many m's you have left. So 3 take away 2 is 1, which tells you how many m's you have left, which is only 1. So that's just m in this case. If you had more m's, you know, you would have, have m squared or something, whatever. You can think about that, what happens if you have different numbers. Anyway, um, x squared cubed means x squared times x squared times x squared. Okay, and you already accepted the idea that you have to add the powers if you're timesing, which gives you x to the 6, okay. So what happened really? Well, you've got 3 of these x squared, okay, which means you've got 3 of these 2, so 3 times 2 is 6, really. So this is effectively timesing by this to give you that. Okay, and finally, this minus stuff, the real explanation, I mean, I just told you you have to flip upside down, but the real explanation is, uh, <coughs> let's go back to this idea that to get from this stage to this stage, you have to divide, and to get from this stage to this stage, you have to divide again. Okay, to get to the next stage, which is a to the minus one, you have to divide again. So you got one, and you have to div if you divide that by a, you got one over a. So basically, one over a is just like basically dividing by a. Yeah. Um, because if you divide by 3, it's the same as timesing by 1 third, isn't it? So, divide, timesing by 1 over a is the same as... Div anyway, you get the idea, right? Um, so, minus powers basically mean divide. And if you've got a minus power... Uh, and so, if, if div minus powers means divide, well, that explains this thing. Why do we have to flip upside down? Well, if you divide by a fraction, that means flip the fraction upside down. And even this explains this even better actually, because if you got a two and minus powers actually means divide really, uh, rather than just flips up upside down, right? If you divide, that means well, it means one divided by two to the power four, which is one over sixteen really. That's it. Um, oh, maybe I, haven't, I could explain this a bit more. If you've got a to the power minus 2, that means divide by a again, right? So uh, you have 1 over a squared, etc. So basically it means 1 divided by... Uh, so a to the power minus 2 means a to 1 divided by a to the power 2. So 2 to the power minus 4 means 1 divided by 2 to the power 4, which is 1 to over 16, really. 2 to the power 4 is 16. Okay, that's enough.